Right, so the second talk uh, covers a project that we call SciWMS. Um, it's basically an OGC web map service. Um, it's built around NetCDF data and OpenDAP web services. So um, it sounds like you guys sort of know, know what OpenDAP and NetCDF are. Um, we can come back to this slide if you guys actually have questions. Uh, but basically, NetCDF is a binary file format, n dimensional data, it's common. And, the MetOcean community, and OpenDAP is a binary uh, web, web service protocol for, um, for accessing that data in sort of a lazy fashion. So the motivation for this project was a lack of uh, sort of easy to use, um, easy to get up to speed with tools um, for dealing, sort of generally dealing with unstructured meshes uh, like FVCOM and AdCERC, you know, hydrodynamic models. Um, uh, also, uh, basic WMS technologies don't support rendering of, of unstructured meshes. They prefer to have their data either in, in a very well-defined vector format or, or some kind of raster gridded representation. Um, so there really aren't any good visualization tools that are web accessible that preserve the topology of, of data located on nodes in a triangular mesh or located on cell faces or on cell edges. Uh, and there's consensus building around um, these unstructured mesh conventions uh, for how they're represented in NetCDF, although there's some, there's less consensus about how much consensus there is <laughs> regarding how well-defined the standard is. But we're getting there, and hopefully, actually, we're gonna talk about that um, at the conference um, amongst the people that are working in that community. So this will be a big, big step, I think. Uh, and there's vast numbers of, of um, large repositories of met ocean uh, model and observation data available all around the world. Um, you know, there's 30 terabyte hindcasts at the University of Massachusetts for, for the Gulf of Maine and, and stuff. And to have access and to be able to visualize that data and not necessarily have to have your, your code or your, or your services sitting on that server is, is really powerful, provided that they, they're providing a, this open app interface. So these are just some features. I don't want it to seem like I'm selling it, but I mean, I, I think it works really well. Um, we've got styles that preserve the topology, sort of the triangular nature of a lot of unstructured meshes. Um, we've got a sophisticated layer and style specification, so you can do, there's some, there's some layer math and some, some layer conversion stuff that is included in the layer specification. So if you, if you wanna add sea surface height to depth for total water depth, we have a protocol in place to allow you to do that and then, and then it provides you that, that layer as the result. Um, it's closely tied to matplotlib because matplotlib is, is really great and they've done all of the hard, hard work for us. Um, support for sort of logical groupings of layers um, and scientifically correct get feature info queries. So for instance, if you click inside of a cell and, and the parameter you're interested in is, is located on the cell face, we use some spatial querying, spatial relationships to, to not, you know, to instead of define a closest node, we find that you're, you know, we're, you're on a cell and you want the cell and we give you that value. Uh, this is the basic architecture of the system. Um, the only really important thing to note is the grid topology cache. I guess that's on the right. Um, because it would really be, it wouldn't be feasible in a web service, web mapping setting to every time you want to request, you know, temperature, you want a map of, of a large array, a lar large model array of, of temperature to have to request temperature. And then also you need the time variable and the depth variable and the lat variable and the lon variable. And then you have to subset those variables to figure out what it is you actually want to plot. So when we initialize data sets, we store all of those coordinate variables and the topological relationships locally on the server. And then we only do lazy access um, to the data sets if they're remote for what we need. Uh, these are the, the basic module um, dependencies of the system. Uh, we rely on Django for the web framework. Uh, it's pretty standard. I think probably if I were to, to redo it, I would use Flask, but Django worked out of the box and it worked very well. Uh, Gunicorn is the WSGI server serving Django, um, usually behind Nginx for those people that care. But uh, matplotlib and base map are really important because really they've done all the, all the hard work for us. Um, base map is, is really great because it does all of the, 
the projection uh, and layout associated with with plotting geographic data. So that's uh, really helpful. We don't have to go like into the Proj4 Python, Python library. Well, we do, but you know, we don't have to. Um, and for spatial operations, we use uh, an R tree, uh, the R tree library to do that, uh, and Shapely, which is really convenient. And NumPy and NetCDF both are like sort of the foundation of the data access, data storage, um, and manipulation. So let's see it. So I know I've been focusing on, on structured meshes, triangular meshes, but I mean, it, work, it works for st structured grids as well. Um, so all, all of this data is, is re remotely located from the, the actual EC2 instance that this, this service is sitting on. Um, so a lot of the latency you see is just due to the latency in the wire. Um, Well, anyway, you can see the triangles, right? Very interesting. Uh, so this is sort of the roadmap for where we're going. If you want to look at these slides on your own time, Next Steps is actually a link that takes you to our documentation that sort of outlines the roadmap. A lot of it's under negotiation right now. Um, different funding agencies only are willing to fund different parts of of what we'd like to include, and some of it, some of the stuff that we're going to work on in our spare time is going to fall by the wayside. But um, this is just a sample of some of the things that we're we're looking to add, and there's a lot more like in the documentation. Um, particularly, uh, we like to solve bugs as we come across them. So um, if there's a data set that doesn't look the way scientifically that it should look, the way it's being visualized in Matplotlib, um, then we're really interested in, in making a way to make it look correct. And that is it. Does anyone have any questions? No questions? Well, I have some great pictures, so how about this? Okay, any other questions? <laughs>